Um, introductions, we don't need any because we already know what's going on uh, and we know each other. So uh, board farm status, um, I can give my update. Uh, I've done some, you know, a lot of additional modifications to board farm. Um, we're, uh, ex uh, some of them have been sent up as pull requests. Some of them are kind of in progress that we need to send as, uh, that I need to send as a pull request at some point, um, but haven't yet. Um, I don't have a, have a list of the things that have changed, but it, it has been, it's been a very active week. Um, also, the other thing is uh, on ants. I, I, I have my Ansible set up uh, posted now. It's it, as you can see, it says WIP at the end. It's a work in progress. It needs some cleanup, but um, that's how I manage all the 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 three Raspberry Pis and um, update them um, and get them into a uh, a setup that actually uh, allows them to run everything, um, update, install all the packages, everything like that. So it, it's very helpful. Um, I it, there's some obviously one-offs in there, and, and until I until I get it um, get it in a state where I really feel we can like people can just jump and take it. But f I mean, I think it's it's not too far from where we need to be. So um, I will uh, add instructions on how to use that going forward if people are interested. Yeah, I'd be interested for sure. Awesome. Yeah, it's 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 been working really well. In fact, I can actually um, I was going to just show a, a quick demo. I uh, this is actually logged in um, to the uh, controlling the controller, which is the one that has um, the DB120 router is connected via serial. Um, and then we have a LAN and a WAN. And if you're here, you you could have you would have logged in externally. I don't have I I've tested it. I just tested it today. Can you log in through our um the co-working space router and to connect externally? And I it does work. Um, but I can't do that because otherwise this conversation would be going over my cell phone connection, and I really don't want that. Um, <laughs> uh, but uh, if you do D, uh, BFT DB one twenty, and then um I have a new kernel image. And then a new uh, root FS, and you run that, and it will begin the process of uh, flashing it. Um, it's connecting to U-Boot, uh, and it's going to flash a new kernel image in root FS. It takes quite a while, so um, we probably won't watch it the entire time. But uh, it, it it's working really well. Um, I, I would be comfortable having people connect to this in the very near future, at least for be, you know beta testing to see if this fits everybody's needs. Um, Where is this uh, kernel image and the root of this located? Is it on your uh, you uh, on your device or on the device uh, which is connected uh, it, to I the board? Put, I put the kernel image um, on the. Uh, the device is connected to the board. You could, you would probably use SCP to up, upload it. Um, if you ha had it on your device, it uh, also allows you, um, you could use it like HTTP. If you had it on like a web server, uh, you could use that too. But the key is just, it has to be in a place that's available. Um, so I, that ha I had previously built that and uploaded it using SCP. Okay. So yeah, and it's it's flashing right now. So so generally, that's where that's where things are. It's it's very cool. Um, I'm I, I'm wondering, you know, what do we feel our next steps, and how do we actually uh, share this with people to see, like, hey, how do you want to use this, and and what's what are next steps? I'm kind of curious. Do, do you have any opinion on that, Hauke? Uh. Have you? Is it uh, how good is the documentation of this? Or I need to make it. Yeah, I need to write it. <laughs> um, and is it still needing uh, this free uh, uh, Raspberry Pi, or does it also work with in different setups, like like a PC with uh, with a VLAN switch in between, or something like this? 
you could do either. My setup is is the Raspberry Pis for people who want to. Uh, um, but the um, there actually is documentation in the uh, Board Farm repository already uh, for how to do it with VLANs. Oh, okay. Um, the folks, the folks at CZ Nick had, uh, had actually added it. Oh, okay. Because you, the boards you are using are probably also supporting VLAN switching and so on. At least when you have the right software running on them. Probably. I mean, I would think they would. I don't see why they wouldn't. Yeah, I don't know how to, to proceed here. Uh, yeah, make an announcement. You can announce it on the, the mailing list uh, that it works and then probably people will try it out and yeah, I don't know what what's what's the plan from from Purple to sponsor some uh, kits with a uh, switchable uh, plug and so on if people want to set up it somewhere. Yeah, I, I don't know. I don't think we've decided exactly okay. how we want to go about doing that. Uh, what are the what are the modifications that you made versus the standard board farm uh, GitHub repository? Uh, the big thing that the board farm that I added um, is the features to connect um, it, the WAN and the LAN as defined as defined in uh, board in the upstream board farm requires the WAN and the LAN to run as root. Um, which is in the case if you want somebody co to connect to it, um, who you may um, trust on some level but not entirely, uh, that could be a little dangerous, obviously. Um, so I have modified uh, the, uh, the board farm to allow you to run the WAN and the LAN. Um, you can run it using a, uh, a normal user. They have, a, they have some um some rights that you know to run like ping and things like that but generally it is uh it's more or less uh just that as a and as a normal able, user and you What's were able that? to do you were able to run that flash uh update um as a normal user yes um and where that is the the interact is right here so now you can then access the console wan lan um w lan which we don't have set up and then the list of tests and run them uh not all the tests are working i'm still working through some of them because they don't all run as uh they don't properly run as a normal user but um i have to i can get that added over time so uh yeah that's really interesting i'd um is exactly what I was going to work on today. Actually, was getting a board farm set up. I've got a, a few Raspberry Pis here. Um, I think the... Uh, documentation in the, in the GitHub repository allowed me to control those Raspberry Pis through a Windows host. Um, I... Yeah, can you what what are the details of your your board farm setup? Uh, the board farm setup that we have is we have one Raspberry Pi um, that has its serial port is connected to the the device under test, and then it has a network cable out to the you know your network. Um, you then have uh, two two other Raspberry Pis. Um, one of those is connected to a the WAN. The, uh, of your device you're testing. The other one's connected to the LAN of the device you're testing. And then we also have another network cable coming out of each of those to the, your main network so you can connect to things. Um, and uh, there, we also have a power switch. Uh, it's a web power switch. I don't know if that feature has been, I've upstreamed that yet. Um, that, that's something I should do. But you can then, um, turn on you you can do like resets remotely which i actually did when i ran that that kernel test um or the or the flash i actually reset the device we're testing the db120 
um, as part of the test. So uh, the Ansible, I, I think the Ansible might help you a little, might help you kind of see what I've done. Um, and if you need to, we can uh, either, you know, chat or something and I can help you through it and um, kind of uh, explain what I did and why I did it. That'd be good. The only thing that I think I would miss or not have yet is the a network uh, power switch. Um, but that's something that uh, would be really valuable for uh, us anyway. So I'll probably try and order one today. So maybe if uh, yeah, you could help me out a little bit and even details of which one you got. Awesome. Yeah, definitely. We can do that after the meeting. Um, you, I believe you can run it without a network power switch. It's just going to tell you like, hey, you need to, you know, you need to, you know, power cycle the board basically or something. It'll, it'll tell you on screen. Okay. So, yep. So, but obviously it's easier if you, if you have the network power switch. Um, so yeah, those are the, those are the big things uh, with that. Um, I don't know if, uh, what else we, anything else that people want to talk about with board farm? Okay. Is there a, so I think oh. in, when I was reading the board farm documentation, it'll do up to, uh, like 10, 15 devices. I've never tested it above one, but I've, I know that the people at um, at QCA have done a bunch, so I, I don't know what limit. I don't see. I guess I don't see why it, there would be actually a much of a limit on it, on the number of devices, because it's based upon the way it's designed. But there may be. I, I don't know. Okay. Um, we can talk about funding OpenWRT projects. Um, I've been kind of, I, I know that uh, some of the OpenWRT folks uh, and Hauke, I, I don't know if you want to talk about this, you're going to talk with Art. I, is there been any update with that? Uh, no, no, we are still trying to find a, a date mm -hmm. where we are all available. Okay, cool. All right. Well, we'll kind of put that on hold until until we get that done. And I need to talk to Kathy too. I haven't been able to talk to her. Um, she was busy last week, and we couldn't find a time this week. So, um, yeah, I guess we will we'll go forward with that when when it's time. Uh, yeah. Regulatory updates. Uh, obviously, people may have heard that TP Link is now publicly stating that they are um, locking their routers. Uh, because of the FCC regulations, um, they and I was uh, the it was in there was an article in Ars Te Technica about it that that quoted myself and um, somebody from Public Knowledge and uh, a gentleman from the EFF uh, discussing this. So uh, that's both bad and good because it it's bad in the, in the fact that you know obviously people are locking down routers. That's very bad. Um, it's also good in the sense that um, uh, we actually have some clarity that you know, this is happening um, and that they're because the FCC has not been very clear on that. Um, I have uh, I'm going to be speaking at Libre Planet this weekend um, about the, you know, the, the topic um, and then we can we'll. Uh, we'll see what, if anything happens there just to kind of educate people on uh, some of the issues with, with the regulations and some of the dangers of it and obviously what this all means. Anything, anything else that people are want to talk about with regulatory? All right. Uh, no news in OpenWRT Summit. Um, uh, I kind of was waiting for the uh, to kind of the PSSP feedback to kind of uh, you know work its way out before we move on to, before we uh, handle something else at the same time. 
Um, does do you think that makes sense, Hoki? Uh, yes, probably yes, yeah. Okay, that's what I thought. Um, do we have any other topics that people want to talk about? All right. Um, well, with that, we can we can close the meeting, um, and uh, I will stay around, um, Daniel, so we can we can talk about the stuff I've done with Ansible and and kind of uh, work through um, what makes sense for you with the board farm. Fantastic. Awesome. Well, thank you everybody for coming, um, and uh, we will meet again next week. See ya. Okay, bye. bye.